and you're bringing another great guest on your great show today. Well, thank you for all the kind words. Uh, Mark, I'm doing fine. You know, uh, Pittsburgh is a little bit cold this part of the country, but, you know, it's funny. Uh, It was cold here, and our guest is up there in Du Bois, Pennsylvania. It's even colder there. And, uh, you know, as far as our temperature, I think tomorrow it's going to be in the, the 40s. Then later next week, I think our Thursday is going to be 60 degrees. So it's kind of a roller coaster winter so far. But we're doing well. If people need to get a hold of me, as they, they have and as they are, GJRMD, 308, Outlook.com. I already have emails coming in. I really have a tremendous guest this morning. And this gentleman uh, is an administrator, however, very, very bright, very successful, uh, has done tremendous things in healthcare with growing health systems. His name is Mark Norman. Uh, he's a Southern boy. You'll pick up a little bit of an accent here, uh, but overall, the gentleman uh, is just tremendous and very bright. He's been associated uh, with uh, a growing health care system in western Pennsylvania. Mark, since when, about 2013 or 14? I've been here since 2016, Dr. Roscoe. 16. Good. So we're yeah. looking at uh, six, seven years. And, Mark, you've had the position of being a COO, which is Chief Operating Officer, correct? And, Mark, is that of a – uh, the four hospital system, or is that the entire, you know, eight hospital system, if you will? Yes, that's for the entire uh, health system, which is our eight hospitals, Dr. Roscoe. And, again, I appreciate you having me on today. I'm looking forward to this. Well, very good. We have two, and uh, I, I know you're very, very busy, believe me. And, uh, you know, i like to thank someone there, uh, Corrine Labo- Laboon, who has helped to orchestrate this and get us together. She's done a tremendous job. And, again, Mark, I thank you so very much for spending a Saturday morning with me, uh, again, talking to our listeners. And, you know, uh, we have Mark Mancini uh, in L.A. producing. So, and, Mark, I think you have questions already coming in as I have emails already coming in. Uh, you know, what I'd like to talk about today, and, you know, Mark, uh, Mark Norman, if I, I'll call you that so we don't get the Marks confused, But, Mark Norman, you know, I'd like to put a little different spin on things. I know you've done a tremendous job, you know, with regard to your responsibilities as COO, you know, working for the organization of Penn Highlands. What I thought with regard to, you know, what you've done, and I kind of want to start back. You were an engineer at one time, correct? Yes, that's correct. I actually have an industrial engineering degree, which – uh, some may say that that's an interesting path to healthcare, and it is. And it is. Yeah. But there are there are a lot there are some industrial engineers out in healthcare, and really it fits very well with what we're trying to do in healthcare. And that is obviously number one, improve quality, and inc- and improve patient satisfaction. At the same time, producing at a very uh, low cost, which is very critical in today's healthcare environment, where we're you know limited somewhat on reimbursement uh, and th- and those types of things, and and particularly with access, creative, and how we provide the best access to our patients. Thank you. You know, uh, Mark Norman, you know, with regard to that, um, just uh, can you give us a little bit of a history? How did you get from industrial engineering into healthcare? What was the road, Mark? Now, you were down in Mississippi when this was going on, Tupelo, correct? Yes, that's correct. Yes, part of uh, actually started with North Mississippi Health Services. Uh, how I got into healthcare, I guess I have to give the credit to my wife. Uh, probably without okay. her, I don't know if I would have healthcare or not. She was a sure. um, she's a speech pathologist and uh, was working for North Mississippi Health Services, and I was finishing up my senior year of of, of school at Mississippi State. And uh, she came home one day and she said, "Hey, they are looking for an industrial engineer uh, to um, work on operational improvement, performance improvement for the health system." And I said, "Oh, wow, really? That sounds really interesting." And really, out of curiosity, I went and and spoke to uh, one of the administrators for the health system, and it uh, really piqued my interest. I thought this is really a, a great way to have an effect on the health of people. 
uh, and it just kind of it went from there. I uh, started in healthcare, and I really started with the the, the grassroots of really learning the processes yes. of healthcare, spending a lot of time uh, learning, and probably um, in the first couple of years asking a lot of uh, maybe even dumb questions. But comes from that sure. um, sometimes some some um, uh, different perspective uh, because anytime you have someone like myself who's very process oriented. Uh, we tend to ask a lot of process-oriented questions and try to understand how the system of healthcare works. And I have said this for for a, a long time, and I believe this is healthcare is one of the most complicated systems uh, businesses Correct. to operate. And, I, I, and unless you're in the in the healthcare system, uh, sometimes maybe it's hard to see that. It may it may not seem that way from the outside looking in at times, but Extraordinary, um, you know, uh, regulatory, um, you know, issues that oh, you yeah. have to comply with, and and a host of uh, rules and regulations when it comes to reimbursements. And you never can be a expert on everything in healthcare. And I think that's why one of the good things about being part of a health system is you have individuals that are uh, experts in their area, whether it's reimbursement, uh, whether yes. it's a particular service line, and you're able to knowledge share, and I'm a big proponent of sharing knowledge across the organization because I feel like that's what takes the organization to the next level. Wonderful. Mark, you know, along those same lines, you know, with your first job, now you were at uh, North Mississippi Health Services for about 10 or 11 years, correct, as operations manager and things like that? Yes, yes, just a a lot of what I did in the beginnings, so again, was performance improvement. Uh, I also managed the um, the staffing and and the the productivity, which is very important in healthcare to make sure that uh, that you're staffing according to volumes. We operate on very slim margins in healthcare, and so one of the number one uh, expenses are labor. It's, you know, it is labor. Yes, and so. That- one of my focuses early on was making sure we had the right resources in the right places throughout the health system, uh, and that was kind of my initial focus. But really, that grew into administrative work, it, um, strategic planning for the health system, uh, and then ultimately, I had a, a you know a desire to be a hospital administrator, and and then went to work for a full of different facilities in Mississippi, uh, critical access hospital, and. Critical Access Hospitals, um, to, to give a, a very quick overview of what a critical access sure. hospital is. It's Please do that. Basically for, yeah, a, define that. Yeah, it's a, it's a hospital, a small hospital that has to have less than 25 beds. It has to be a certain distance away from other hospitals to qualify. This program was developed back in the, the 1990s and really was developed to save small hospitals. And so I actually operated a couple of critical access hospitals in in central Mississippi for about six years prior to coming to um, uh, here to Penn Penn Highlands Healthcare. Yeah, so um, that's that's real important. You know, small hospitals, and this kind of kind of leads into why rural healthcare is so important in our communities. Uh, without some of these small hospitals and rural communities, uh, you know, where would the people go for immediate care, whether that's emergency room right. care, primary care? Uh, access to transportation to traverse long distances is very difficult for a lot of individuals. Um, just take, for instance, here. I know you know this area quite well. Uh, we're in west central Pennsylvania here yes. in Dubois right now. It's two hours to Pittsburgh. And if you've got a serious health issue, uh, you can't wait two hours for, for care. And that's why it's so critically Correct. important that we keep care uh, local in our communities uh, and provide this level of services, um, you know, that we can can provide so that uh, patients don't have to travel long distances. Now, sure, there may sure. be ser- certain very high level services that you may need it to uh, to um, you know travel for. Oh, but for the most part, them, yeah. we want to provide many local services as we can uh, local. Beautiful, Mark. You know, if I could go back just a little bit, you know, in your first your first position here with North Mississippi. So I'm going back to the 2000 area. And then, you know, as you developed your skills, you know, as far as the direction and in doing a lot of these things that you provided, you know, productivity uh, analysis and things like that, 
Where did you learn to do that? 